Hi, everyone, and thank you for joining us for this webinar. Uh, just giving it a moment for everyone to arrive, and then we'll start. Hi, everyone, um, and thank you for joining us on this, this, this webinar. Um, I'm just giving it a, a moment to, to, to let any stragglers join, and, and then we'll jump right to it. Um, it's worthwhile to mention there is a chat window. Uh, I won't actively be monitoring it during this webinar, uh, but Anne Fleur will be uh, monitoring it and letting me know of any questions that might come up uh, for the Q&A period at the end. Um, my hope is to keep this within the uh, 15 minutes kind of window. Uh, we're going to quickly review a few things and open up the floor for questions or comments if there are any. <clears throat> okay, so I'm just going to uh, switch my, my presentation here. Just give me a moment. Okay, so like I said, um, everyone should be seeing uh, um, a landing page right now. Let me know if you, you're not. Um, <clears throat> so thank you again for joining us for this webinar. Uh, our, our, our main intentions is to cover kind of new things that we're developing within uh, Goldspot and Geotic itself. Um, and right now for this webinar, we're gonna focus on our revamping of the preview window and a bit of a, an upgrade to our master satellite uh, syncing uh, process. And I'll kind of review what that is as well. <clears throat> um, so I guess the first thing is our, our agenda. So first is the intro, which we kind of already went through. Uh, and then we're gonna review the master satellite improvements, uh, then review the uh, preview window improvements, and then touch a little bit upon what's coming next in, in well, 2023, and again, open the floor for some Q&A. Um, it is worthwhile to mention that before this webinar, we had a, a French version of the webinar uh, before this. it They are the same webinar, so if you were in attendance to the first one, this is going to be a repeat of that. Uh, there should be no real new, uh, new things mentioned in, in this webinar. Um, <clears throat> So I think we're okay to, to continue just to keep us on track. So I'm just going to uh, get right into it. Like I said, if you have any questions, please post them in the chat and uh, we'll get to them uh, towards the end. Oop, that was kind of weird. Um, so I think the, the first thing that we need to kind of address is one of the, ma uh, one of the major parts of this webinar is going to be this master satellite syncing system. Um, now that we made some adjustments, improvements to the process. So it's worthwhile to remind users how they can implement uh, Geotic Log um, on their own site. I'm just going to turn on my laser pointer. Um, so depending on your, your existing infrastructure, if you have some or not, uh, we have the traditional IT infrastructure where you can host your Geotic Log database on the master, <clears throat> sorry, uh, your master on the, uh, the central database essentially for your company. And then a lot of the times, if you have a, that large of an IT infrastructure, you're gonna also have a project level um, uh, server available. And in that case, you can host your master database uh, in the corporate server and then have a satellite database sitting on your, your project server uh, and users can uh, connect directly to those um, satellite uh, databases. Uh, it's worthwhile to mention too that it's scalable, so just uh, I have just one site there, but we can actually have multiple sites that connect to it. So you can have multiple uh, satellite servers as well, connecting to one central master. Uh, and we also have offline mode as well that comes with satellite databases. So <clears throat> a user can connect to a satellite database locally, like your, um, your site-specific um, satellite database, and then do another checkout from there and, and go offline and work offline and then reconnect and that'll sync up to your, your project 
satellite database, and then that'll eventually sync up to the master satellite database. Uh, if you do not have that existing site infrastructure, then we also have uh, AWS or cloud-based uh, infrastructure hosting as well. Uh, the benefit to there is everyone, regardless of how many sites you have, uh, connect directly to the cloud, uh, perform all their work, but we also have the offline mode as well. So users connect to the cloud and they can uh, create their own satellite database, go offline, do the work and, and go online and reconnect and, and sync everything afterwards. Uh, it's always worthwhile to, to remind users that they cannot host their geotech database in a file sharing system like OneDrive or SharePoint uh, or any of the others. Um, this is a bit um, uh, not complex, but it does um, uh, pose some challenges with all the different types of file sharing services that are out there. So if you'd like any more information on, on cloud hosting or how you can implement a Geotech database, uh, please reach out to us and we can uh, address your, your needs specifically. Um, <clears throat> so with that, we're going to um, get into a, a preview of how you would go about doing that. Um, so if we are using that master satellite system, we're going to click on the project tab and that's where you're going to see the, uh, the sync or satellite option. Uh, if you click on that, you're going to see your, um, your satellite database, uh, that you're connecting to. You can create new ones or you can modify existing ones, but we already have one set up. So we're just going to select that default and you kind of see your master and your satellite from there. Um, in case the mouse isn't too, too visible, I'll, I'll put a point around occasionally as well. So you can see our master and our satellite database, but we clicked on the selection because we want to actually specify which holes we're checking out. Um, and it's worthwhile to mention, it doesn't have to be one project specific. You can have multiple project holes checked out and it's not just holes. You can check out your soil sampling and, and stuff like that as well. Um, so once you select the holes that you want, you're going to essentially see everything listed in, in that same dialog. And <clears throat> on the right, you'll essentially see uh, a bunch of different options. So we have the, the read-only option, which uh, is kind of ex exactly what it says. We can check the hole out from the master satellite, or sorry, from the master database down to the satellite uh, as a read-only. So it's a copy of the version only. Uh, the, the master editable version still resides in the master in this case. Um, that's beneficial if you just want to refer to a drill hole and, and not actually be the owner of it and allow other people to continue modifying it. Uh, of course, we have the modify. That's obviously going to allow you to modify. Anything that's set to modify will be set to read only in the master database, as well as we have a delete option. So that will not delete any of your drill holes. Let's be clear on that. Uh, what it really is designed for when you're syncing it back up to the master satellite, second selecting delete will actually delete uh, the copy of it from your satellite database, but the central, uh, the central master database will keep it always there. Um, so the delete really is only for removing it from your satellite system. So from there, we can click synchronize and accept the defaults, or we're actually going to go to next. And here we can specify our users. Uh, so any user set up, you can check and say who you want to be able to edit this or, or not. Uh, conversely, if you have your group set up, like uh, core loggers, you can just select the group and all the users assigned to that group will do it. <clears throat> so from there, if we click uh, next, it'll take us kind of to a final landing uh, a landing page where we can essentially see what's going to happen. So you can see we have a master database on the left and the satellite database on the right. And we have an arrow system that points uh, kind of another layer of checks to our users to make sure that they understand that the data is flowing from master to the satellite. Uh, if you're doing it the other way, obviously the arrows would be pointing the other way. Um, um, and we have also implemented some more date and times stamps within the checkout process. So that allows another check of the users to make sure that the copy they are copying out the latest version. Uh, potentially, if, if you know someone that's that's editing it and they said it's checked in, you can actually check the time and say, oh, time and date and say, oh, yours, yours hasn't been checked in yet. Please, please go back and, and do that. So we've essentially put in a few more steps that allow users to verify this whole process. Uh, and we've also set... Um, uh, UTC, so universal time uh, time zone. So instead of reading your local computer, we've actually decided to standardize and use uh, the UTC time zone. So it won't reflect your, your computer's uh, time zones. Uh, so clicking next will obviously check everything out um, <clears throat> and go through the process. Once that's done, you click close and you'll notice that the project tab, project landing tab now has that information updated with uh, who's locked it and the user that's had it. Um, 
so ultimately we have a bit more of a um, a secure and um, visual process, I guess, for the users to check out. Uh, in the back end, we've done a lot of work on ensuring that uh, the validation process is there, ensuring that each specific table is, is read over. Um, and if there is any problems within that data synchronization, there is um, a more robust uh, and detailed error messaging that might explain what's going on. So, so users can go back and uh, address any issues that might come up. Um, so with that being said, because we did a quite a bit of revamping of this satellite system, the master satellite checkout system, uh, we are recommending all users who use this um, the syncing system to upgrade to the, this 8.2.11 version. Uh, so all users have those, those extra data validation and data check systems in place. Um, so that's really it for our, our master satellite update. Uh, it's more just to inform users that one, the, the, the functionality exists, and two, that we've built in a lot more data validation, data checks into the process to ensure that uh, the data the data is valid and, and safe and secure at all times. Um, <clears throat> so that's all I really have on, on that satellite system, a satellite syncing system. Um, if you do have any questions about that, please do put it in the chat and I'll, I'll get back to it and address it here at the end. Um, <clears throat> so next, we're gonna talk about the preview window um, uh, revamp, for lack of better terms. Um, so one of the things that we focused on in the past few months of development at, at Geotech has been on the optimization of the source code. Uh, optimization on the code and ensuring that um, everything is well, optimized, I guess, that's in the terms, but also making sure everything is, is up to date and, and making sure all historical code is kind of kind of gone. So because we're going into some of these areas and, and revamping and removing some historical code, it actually allows us to implement some updates as we're doing it as well. Um, so one of the main things through user feedback on performance of the software, on performance of the software and through this migration of the historical codes, we found additional areas where we've been able to optimize, um, optimize the code, which has in turn resulted in significant speed improvements during our internal testings. And specifically, so using uh, cloud-based uh, hosting, um, we've it's it's really been substantial in some of our testing. So uh, again, we do recommend updating because we've really optimized some of the code, and and end users will hopefully uh, notice that as well. Um, so, like I said, as we we took this time to uh, migrate some of the code, we use that time to implement the features, and one of those things is going to be on this preview window. Um, historically, it was just um, uh, by default it was there, but you actually couldn't edit it in any way. Uh, so one of the main things we wanted to do is make sure that we're able to customize that preview window. So by default, the software comes with its all tables kind of view, uh, which is the predefined tables and predefined templates. Um, however, we can obviously alt, uh, now edit these templates to, to match whatever customization you might need. So you can select the default profile, uh, or you can click the little pencil button on the far right, and that will allow us to edit um, the window. And it actually opens up another window, and we'll, we'll drag it over here. Um, <clears throat> so from here, you can see it's a strip log, essentially, that we're using. But um, you can kind of see already, you can have a whole bunch of different strip logs lined up there. And as we get into each one of these, we can, again, go in and customize it. Um, so the first thing is we can you know, customize the depths. We can customize the vertical headers that are there. We can customize and, and set it so it, it matches the page width. So if you're gonna pl plot these out as well, we can scale things so it, it fits your eight and a half by 11 or whatever it might be. Um, but for now, what we're gonna do is just quickly step through a process of, of setting up our own. So we're gonna use the existing template, uh, but we're gonna customize it. So we're gonna remove all of the headers that were there by default. And we're gonna go into the assays and start adding some um, specific things ourselves. So uh, MagSus, we're going to add, um, we're going to go into the assays and add a, a few different assays here. But again, it's worthwhile to mention, you can see that there's a symbol change here. So that's a calculated field where all these other ones are just um, regular assay result fields. Um, so we're making sure everything is visual as our, our users go through it. So those defaults, you can see populate now directly into our, our new kind of preview window, the default preview window, sorry. 
Um, and from there, we can go in and, and alter things a bit more so it, it fits what we're, we're looking to do. Um, so we're going to go in and, and actually alter a few of these and kind of show you that process. So first, we're going to alter the MagSus. And you can see that uh, we're going to turn everything to line graphs for now. Uh, so we're going to actually turn off the text, turn off the, the boxes and switch the line or sorry, switch the graph to a, a, a curve, essentially a line graph. Uh, from there, we can go into the line graph and change how we want it to look, our weight, our color, uh, all those other things. <clears throat> so as we're stepping that up to that, um, So as we're stepping up through that, we'll, uh, sorry, I, I got distracted there for a quick second. Um, but as we uh, as we step through, we can see that now we change that bars to a, a line graph. And now we're gonna do it for the other ones as well. So we're gonna follow the same process. Um, what I omitted on, on the first window was we can actually change our minimum and maximums. We can specify a lot of things so we can declutter the plots themselves. But again, we're gonna go in and change the colors, change all the settings. Um, everything you see is really customizable, everything down to um, the widths of the lines, the colors that you use, uh, the alignments, um, as well as pre-existing legends. If you have them made, you can color them based off legends that you've uh, already predefined within uh, GeoTiglog. Uh, and again, the good thing to remember is that we can actually not... Um, just because we said it doesn't mean we can't go back and change any of these things at any time. Um, so there is a bit of a back and forth sometimes to make sure things are, are fitting uh, the data and the view that you want exactly. So we're just going to quickly change all these over to line graphs. Um, again, if we don't like the color, like I said, that, that yellow is a bit uh, drowned out in this. So maybe we'll go back and change that in uh, afterwards. But for now, that, that's fine. We can see everything. Um, and you'll also notice that the default geotic table column names are there as well. Uh, sometimes they are not very aesthetically pleasing. Uh, they have laboratory codes in it, analytical methods, those kind of things. So we can actually change it to be a, a user-defined text. So instead of seeing seeing uh, AU final, which doesn't make sense to, to users outside, we can actually change it to a custom field like AU grams per ton type of thing. And that way all of our, our columns are consistent regardless of what naming convention uh, is set up in the database. Um, so really from there, we've, we've now set up the, um, the template. Um, as we zoom it up, you can kind of see everything. As we move down, you can start seeing very quickly and easily some correlations in your data. So it's a live link back to your data. As the loggers are entering it, they can see all that information. Um, so we can save it, uh, rename things to whatever we want. So we get a multiple uh, like I said, multiple templates set up. You can uh, move through alteration, through assay results, through or zones, et cetera, et cetera. And you can see all those listed there. Uh, and now we can see that that preview window is now uh, visible in our core logging data. And just like before, if we click on the intervals, it's live linked back to your data. So if you click on an alteration, for example, it will take you to the alteration tab. Um, it is worthwhile to mention when you're using these line graphs, it does work when you click on it, but if you think of that line, it's a very, very small line. So you have to be very precise when you click on it. Um, so right now, that's one of the things we're gonna work on is actually that that hit box for line graph to make sure that you can click almost anywhere in the area and it'll, and it'll recognize that selection. Right now, you have to click right on the line, which can be sometimes difficult. Uh, and the default kind of uh, views around it. So we can have the preview automatically updating, or if you don't want it to update as you're entering data, you don't have to have that done as well. Uh, we can zoom, extent, zoom to a specific area, um, all the kind of basic stuff you'd expect there. Uh, but we also have um, a magnifying glass. So if you want to uh, kind of zoom in on a spe specific area, you can, as well as panning, those kind of stuff, as well as our data selection um, functionality as well. Um, and that's really it for the, the updated preview window. Uh, our, our hope and ultimately our, our eventual plan here is that we're going to have it um, be our live link to our, our data loggers. So as your loggers are, are logging the core, they're able to see kind of all the other column, all the other information and, and start, you know, interpreting their data and start getting some insights as, the, as they're logging or the ability to go back and, and kind of look at different um, results as well.
uh, analytical results. Um, so like I said, that was kind of the, the overview of what's changed for uh, the preview window. Um, but as you can see, there is a, 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 with that integrated preview window, it brings another level of entering and viewing your data. It's easier to move around and visualize your data, um, as well as we're not limited to just what's logged by the core logger. Uh, what else can we do going forward? Uh, with ALS Goldspot, we can actually start integrating other stuff as well. And one of those is being things like tessellation. So if you do a tessellation plot, we can actually save that plot down to your uh, preview window and you can switch between tessellation, switch between your um, predefined strip logs or, or any other things that, that might develop going forward. So <clears throat> with that little teaser, that brings us to, to our, our next spot. Um, because we have a partnership Obviously, there's a partnership between Geotic, ALS, and Goldspot that provides a, a powerful and easy ability to Geotic users eventually to integrate some of their Geocon data with the logging data and improve the final results for creating uh, sections in 3D models. So stay tuned on that. You'll see a lot of news coming out uh, about the tessellation, and you'll see a lot of Goldspot um, information uh, coming out as well about tessellation in the near future. But that's not all. Uh, because we've recently been uh, acquired by ALS, uh, that opens up a whole new window for Geotic as well for um, ALS WebTree. So all I'm gonna say about that is, is stay tuned and, and, and uh, um, keep your eye out because there's gonna be a bunch of uh, new things coming out in 2023 that uh, hopefully we'll be able to bring to you in these webinars first and then uh, implement it out to allow users to get access to it. Um, so that's really it from my end. Um, I'm just going to uh, end my um, end my presentation here and, and switch over if there's any questions or comments. Um, let me just sorry uh, switch that. So if there's any questions or comments, please put it in the chat. Uh, if not, please feel free to reach out to myself uh, or Amfleur, and we can uh, answer any questions you might have as well. Um, so if there's any questions or comments, uh, please let me know. Otherwise. Uh, that's it. Thank you and, and have a good day. So I don't see any comments or questions in the chat, so we'll end it there. Thank you very much. And please do reach out if there's any other questions or comments. Thank you. Take care. Bye now.